Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our next seminar on uh, Net Promoter Score. Um, last time in our uh, last webinar on Net Promoter Score, we talked about that measuring your Net Promoter Score is not not enough just to be uh, to be measuring it. It's important to um, actually do something with it. And um, we talked about the whole flow uh, in, the, in the different in the four stages. So if you missed that webinar, you can still watch it. There's a, there's a blog article on our site and uh, we'll be posting the link here or it's probably already been posted on there. Uh, you can check that one out. And out of that seminar um, came a lot of questions about, well, okay, you know, we're, we want to get the feedback back into our company, but what's the best way to get everybody involved? Does everyone have to be involved in, in the program? And, and how do we do that? Well, uh, today we're going to try to give you some, some answers to those questions and we're going to try to be very concrete. So it's going to be probably a bit shorter than our last webinar, but um, we're going to try to give you really four concrete tips that you can actually really apply right away. So um, let's get uh, let's get started. So the next um, the first the first thing that you really need to do is you need to make it relevant for everyone. If you want to get everybody involved in your Net Promoter Score program, you've got to make it relevant for them. Um, just saying, oh, listen, MPS is important, and this is our global MPS score. Uh, for a lot of people in your company, it's going to be, well, what, is it, what does MPS mean, and what does it mean to me, and what, what can I do about it? So um, we've got some, some tips about that. Um, try to explain what NPS and layman's, what it means in layman's terms, um, that it's a basic measurement of customer satisfaction. And what that customer, if customers are satisfied, they're going to come back and buy more from us. And so that we need to make sure that uh, that everyone is is uh, that every, that everyone is as customer friendly as possible. And then they're going to say, okay, uh, we know that customer satisfaction is important. That makes sense. Um, but what can I do about it? And that's that's a very good question. If they ask that, then you're already making a good start. And what you need to do is you need to to explain to people what is their specific role in the NPS program. How can they have an effect? And there are going to be people in your organization that have a lot of customer contact uh, with people in the in customer service care or something. They have got, of course, direct uh, contact. But someone else might be on the factory floor making the car, you know, mounting car doors in a car factory. He might he doesn't have exactly a lot of customer contact and might not understand his role very well. And maybe he doesn't have to be involved in your program. Um, but he should understand his that that he does have a role actually in your total customer satisfaction. So yeah, does everyone need to be involved? Yes, because your people represent your company. Um, if if uh, someone calls to your call center, whoever answers the phone at that moment is your company. They represent your company, and for the person making the call, their experience with that one person in that call center is basically how they feel about your company. Um, and another reason you need to get everybody involved is because, yeah, social media is just a, is just a click away these days. The moment that someone has a bad uh, experience, yeah, the first thing they're going to do is turn to their social media and broadcast it to the world about what a bad experience they have. And it could just be that one customer care person had was having a bad day, and but that message goes out to uh, many people about the bad experience they had and is detrimental to your customer your your image as a company and also to how satisfied your customers are. Um, this is a quote I like it's from a, a millennial um, you know generation why I'm a, I'm a customer and I don't care if I, whether I'm paying for your service or not just serve me well and if I am paying for your service then I want to be treated like a god and, that, and that's true because the reason your company exists is because um, because of your customers. Yeah. Then, then the next thing. So, okay, people in your within your organization, you've you've explained to them what NPS means. You've um, made it relevant for them. They understand what they can do about it in their job. Then the next thing to do is in is in that information flow is you need to get the information that's coming out of the NPS survey, not just to your NPS team, but you've got to get it down deeper into your organization where where that that information can actually make make a difference, and. This is actually what MPS program is really all about. A lot of people criticize, so, or you know, you hear criticisms about NPS about whether it's a good measurement or not, and, and it is a good measurement in the way that it forces, in one simple question, forces someone to consider what they risk their reputation for your company, and 
by doing that, you're able to really narrow it down very quickly to people, let's say, who are very unhappy or very happy about it. And then from them, you can actually identify the issues that are causing them to be less than satisfied. And if you do something with those issues and you make those people satisfied, then you will see that they will come back and buy more from you. So in that way, MPS is a great measurement, but just measuring it itself is not enough. You have to set up this information flow and you've got to get the information deep into your organization to where it can really make a difference. And, and also a lot of times you hear people saying, yeah, people in my organization, you know, we have our MPS posted and you know, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything with it. Well, that's because just knowing what your NPS means, it's just a number for a lot of people, right? It's just this number and how, what can I do about it? So you need to get the right information to the right people. And how can you do that? And this is really the, you know, the most important part of it, because if you do this well, all the, a lot of the other issues around getting everybody involved, take care of themselves. Well, the first thing you have to do is, is find out from the survey, you've got to try to identify the issues that are giving you a low MPS score and of course, giving you a high MPS score. And um, what you want to do then is you want to uh, work on those issues and then you want to be tracking your MPS over time to see if it's actually having an impact. And you've got to make that the information that you're getting down, you got to make it relevant to those people's day-to-day -day jobs. So let's say if you're, you've got these, you've got issues identified in your survey. Um, what you want to do is um, you want to put them into certain categories. Right, let me get back what I'm going to over there. Oh yeah, you'll see in a second. I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, so yeah, you want to do two things with getting the right people. It's not only, this is something that we have to, we work on with a lot of our customers is don't only take what you're doing wrong. Don't only, don't only identify issues about what's going wrong. Also identify issues about what's going right. Because one of the things about what Net Promoter Score preaches is that, you know, an eight sounds pretty good. A lot of people say, oh, we're getting an eight. That's good. Yep. Someone giving you eight is satisfied, but he's not telling the world about you. He's not, he's not standing from the, you know, shouting from the rooftops. Someone giving a nine or 10 it's probably going around telling other people, oh, you got to use this product. Uh, they're, you know, th this company's service is great. So you can, and it also, it actually helps, it can help morale and stuff too within your company. So don't only be, you know, pushing down to them. Look, this is everything that people hate about us. No, you also, for, from an MPS program, you also want to identify the things that you're doing right and get that information also down. So let's say if people are saying, yeah, I love the way, like, you know, back to that factory worker, I love the way the door sounds when it closes. You know, it's got this really solid sound. It makes me feel good. That kind of information, you get that down all the way down to the guy making doors or, you know, mounting the doors, then you're going to boost his morale and he's going to make sure that those doors, you know, are that, that they seal really tight and that it's that they, they have this great thunk sound. So amplifying what you're doing right uh, is also something you want to use your NPS score. And we so often we see these NPS programs that really focus only on the negative, uh, that which is important, but don't forget the positive. And then we were saying is, you know, getting the right information to the right people, um, then, yeah, okay, how do you do that exactly? That's that's a question we get asked a lot, and then I'm going to go into that into a little more detail here. So uh, the way that uh, that works the best really is to use uh, like a kind of a ticketing system. So you'll see also in, in, in Checkmarket in our survey uh, templates, we've got templates already prepared uh, for these kinds of situations. So you've got your main NPS survey where you're asking your NPS questions and then some follow-up questions. Um, and out of those, out of that, out of those, uh, out of that survey, let's say you're looking at detractors and you're, and you're looking at the open comments from the detractors. Now someone's going to have to follow up on that, on those open comments. And what you do is you create a, a follow-up survey so that when, when uh, a survey comes in and someone is unsatisfied and they leave an open comment, then you set up a second survey, which we also have a template for, which is the follow-up survey. And in the follow-up survey, you're going to ask your team to uh, read the open comment and to try to identify in which, uh, and you want them to divide it up into different categories. You know, what is this issue uh, that the person's bringing up? In what category does it fall into? And then under categories, you can even have issues. So, so. Um, um, Let's say like you've got, you know, you're, you're a car company again, you've got that, you've got an issue with build quality, then you'll probably have a category build quality and underneath there you'll have that the door does not close properly. And you'll, so that'll be an issue under that category build quality. And then you're going to define, a, let's say a department or a team within your organization that is responsible for that category. 
and there has to be someone within that team that is specifically responsible for the entire category. One person responsible. It can be a team, but there has to be one end person that's responsible for that for that category. And what's going to happen is that the follow up. So the so your respondent answers the original survey. That information goes to the follow up team, which fills in another survey, basically, where they will where they're categorizing the open comments that the people are leaving behind into these different categories. That information is then being sent through another notification or some other kind of system or another survey, even uh, which we've also done which is then down to that that team within the department if it's not really department if, if it's if your categories are crossing departments and you can set up a, a you know even a team a, a, you know a team within those two departments let's say that are responsible for that area with you know with members of both departments in the team so it doesn't have to necessarily be a team it can also be in a, a, a department it can also be like a team and then they are responsible to uh, handle the issues underneath their category they are responsible for creating action plans to, you know, wh how are they going to do about it, and then and actually carry it out. And it's important also to, after, when they're creating the action plan, set deadlines. Deadlines are important. Otherwise, you know, things just keep rolling along. Or they're getting so many of complaints about this issue, uh, and they're going along. And and also, if you're doing it right, and you've got the the positive comments coming in, they're also being categorized uh, and sent down to that team, so that that person, when, when that NPS. Uh, Per, that person responsible for the MPS program for that department, when he goes lower with his action plan, can say, "Look, people love this about us. You, uh, you know, we, you know, these people are doing that great. Uh, let's make sure everyone is doing this. This is what people really like. When we do this right, people really like us. So, make sure everyone in that department knows what that is that the people are loving. That's so they're all doing it. And then, and by the way, we've got some. You know, these are the issues where they're less happy about. Let's try to work on those." Um, and then they they're also responsible to report back to um, management about how the, you know about their action plans about the number of issues per per uh, within their within their category, and then try to visualize this uh, on 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 dashboards. So I've got a little chart, a little flow chart here that explains it. Um, and you, you'll see, you know, I, I talked about the survey, the follow up team, the data flowing down into the different departments with the issues, or that these departments can actually take action on them. And you'll see that your MPS will obviously go up if those issues are handled. Then you should see a drop in the number of com a number of the times that those issues are mentioned in in su subsequent surveys. And uh, next to all this 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 the center flow that's going on here, there's other people that that should be in the information that should be getting information within this flow, and those are the the account managers. It may not be relevant uh, for for everybody, but in some organizations you may have. Uh, you may have you may have different groups of customers. So you may have like just basic customers. You may have uh, you know special customers and then enterprise customers. And those uh, enterprise customers probably have like a dedicated account manager. Well, if if they're unhappy and that flows into the follow up team, then you know, there, we should probably be sending that the account manager for that account a notification because you don't want them calling the customer and then saying, yeah, I just I just gave a really bad review of you guys, uh, or I just mentioned these issues, to, and then don't you know about that? I mean. That would not be that would not be a good approach. So, you you also can have an extra notification going to the account managers so that they are aware of what's of what's going on with their customer, and they can actually maybe even proactively reach out to them um, to say, "Listen, we, we got your comments. We take it seriously. Um, we appreciate your feedback, and we're going to do something about this." And then the information still flows down departments, but the account manager can can do something along their side. Um, and then at the same time, also, yeah, obviously management also needs to be kept informed and they're, they're going to want to be tracking the company wide NPS score. They're also going to want to know, yeah, which departments are having the most issues, which are the most pressing issues. Uh, do they need to give any resources to those issues? So they're going to need to get feedback, not, not only from the follow-up team about the different categories, but also from each department or team that that's been set up to handle the, uh, those issues. So this is really a workflow, and what you just see is that, is that the, by getting these issues down to the lowest levels, and people see, oh wait, the key, these are the issues coming out of it. All of a sudden, the NPS becomes very relevant for them, because they understand, okay, if we fix this issue, then the uh, the customer will be more happy. Our NPS will go up, and so it's not just this abstract number that management is always talking about. We need to get our NPS up. They'll actually have something concrete to do, just like just like you're you're tuning into this. Uh, webinar to get concrete tips about how can I get everyone involved, get everyone involved in my organization in my MPS program. 
your, the people, uh, your people are also looking for concrete tips about what they can do. And if you have got something concrete to do, then it becomes real for you and becomes relevant for you. And then, then a lot of the other things, a lot of the other questions that we get about it become irrelevant because what's become relevant, they got something to do and they're going to, they're, then all of a sudden they're going to care about NPS. Then, yeah, then another, uh, another um, tip that, that also helps is, is to, uh, is to gamify it. And I know that's, it's like a buzzword and um, that's been used for a little while now, but I think it really, uh, really does work to, to uh, gamify your NPS score. And there's some fun ways of, uh, of doing it and some interesting ways of doing it that really will increase motivation because that's what the gamification is not, is it's about mo increasing motivation. Um, so for instance, not, it won't, won't be applicable to every single company or every single situation, but for instance, let's say uh, if you've got different branch offices or you've got different stores, store locations, then you could try to also create an MPS. You've got your global MPS score, and, but you can also filter down and get, get your MPS score uh, you know, per, maybe per department, but yeah, per branch or per store location, or uh, it could be per department if that department is, is front-facing and has, has touch points with, uh, with customers. And then they'll have their own individual NPS. And that'll also really motivate them because they'll see, okay, look, the global NPS is this. And our NPS is only this. What can we do better? Give give me those issues because I want to, you know, I want to be able to see it. Uh, I want to be able to improve so their their score. So that's a gamification. That's that's that motivation that you're that you're creating. Um, sometimes you can even set up some kind of reward system um, where you're actually rewarding people. Um, we have uh, some examples of that coming up in a in a second. Yeah, another. And so I was saying that you could, you can, know, so you've got your, your global MPS score and you can even filter that down to your branch officer store if you know what it is. But another thing that you can do is, um, is, is have these extra surveys. So we've got this like longitudinal, this long longitudinal study going on of your global MPS score that you're tracking through time. You're, you're attacking the issues. But for some departments, it could be interesting to set up sort of mini surveys, little mini touch point surveys. So instead of asking like, you know, all of your customers uh, once a year, and then you're asking them and you're breaking them down in, into six month periods or, you know, one month periods where you're asking a small group every month and tracking your, your score that way, you can actually, for certain departments that have contact, let's say like your customer support, you can actually have another separate survey for them, just really for that one department, a specific survey. And it could be like, let's say um, after every time someone calls someone in your call center, uh, and they hang up with a cool down so you're not getting asked too often if they're calling back more often. Um, you send them a quick survey just saying, you just talked to John, let's say on the phone, would you recommend John to, uh, to somebody else as, as their customer, or as the customer representative in your company to handle their requests? And then you'll, it's amazing what, what kind of results that that, that, that gives and get the, you know, then you can give them their own feedback. It's like an individual MPS almost. They're getting their own feedback about the issues. Like the people say, yeah, John is super friendly, but he doesn't seem to be technical enough or, or something opposite. John is super friendly. He really wants to help me, but I don't think he understands, uh, you know, let's say our, our situation well enough and he, he can work on that individually. And as his MPS score goes up, then he, as a representative of your company, then he that affects your global score and your global score will go up. So these these small these small sort of touch point NPS surveys um, are interesting. Also, you can ask other questions and then more specific questions for that. You don't want to waste a lot of people's time these days. People will not fill in super long surveys, and if they do, they're not going to be you know aware you know by the by question ten or question twenty how honest they are they answering. They're they're going through it, but by by doing these touch point surveys, you can ask three or four very specific questions about that that thing and you can get some really in-depth uh, data there. What we sometimes what we sometimes do is let's say you've got a survey where you're asking an MPS question, you've got this and then you're they're asking an open question. Um, you're not going to ask them yeah, you, I, normally after you ask an NPS question, you, then you you give a big, big question. You know, what can we do to to improve? Or what? Or great. What what can we do? What, what did we do so great to, that you're so happy about us? And let's say they enter in there uh, something about customer support or something about support. Then um, yeah, your follow up team has to try to categorize that. But then what is the specific issue? They may just say, oh, you've got terrible customer support. You don't know exactly what the issue was with customer support. So what we uh, so what we do in 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 our NPS surveys and definitely the touch point surveys is you go a step further and based on keywords. So let's say if the word support or customer support uh, appears in their open answer, then you're going to ask them a follow-up question to rank 
customer support on a number of items. So you might say, um, so someone says, okay, yeah, I'm unhappy. Okay, or, you know, they give like a force or they're a detractor. They come into the they come into the um, the question. Oh no! Oh, well, what did we do wrong? What can we do better? And they say, oh, your customer support is terrible. Then you can have a follow up question automatically saying, okay, would you please rank our customer support on the following uh, on the following on the following points, and then. Uh, it'll say something like, let's say, the speed with which the phone was answered, the quality, the knowledgeability of the agent, the friendliness of the agent, and so forth. And by doing that, that'll really help your follow-up team to um, categorize and find out what the specific issue is with the um, with that with that respondent. And you can have multiple of those questions in there, so that if they, uh, you're going to get some false positives. Someone might say, "Yeah, you've got great customer support, but the um, but it took too long to deliver." So you can, so you might get a, a few false positives in there, um, but but that's not bad. You can the 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 quality of the data is uh, is much better then. But you can't you can't ask too many of those questions. If your survey's too long, the next time they get a survey from you, they're not gonna they're not gonna want to fill it in anymore. So try to keep it relevant using those keyword uh, those keyword searches. Um, that was so I've got here's like an example, uh, like in the call center, you might literally on a gigantic LCD screen. In the call center, might be showing the um, let's say the top five uh, callers of the day with the, with the highest MPS score. Um, don't show the bottom five. That's that's not uh, that's not very good for morale. But by showing the top five, keeping it positive, then people say, oh, "I want to get on that board." Or then you can also say, "Okay, whoever has got the top score of the day of, of this week, for instance, gets a bottle of champagne." Or you know, you might even have them talk about to the rest of the group about what they are doing so well. Or you might look into their, you might at the bottom of the screen on that on that LCD, which we've also done for the like the promoters and nines and the tens. You might just put their comments, literally, you know, literally put their comments uh, scrolling across the bottom of that of that bar. So there's like this constant positive reinforcement about what people like so much. And then it, and if they're talking about John, about how friendly he is and everything, it's going to really motivate everyone in the call center. That, that That's really gamifying the gamifying it. And by keeping it positive by showing the top five, not the bottom five, then um, you're really going to motivate people to, to do better. And they'll really understand it becomes this real number that's continuously changing above them. Um, and uh, that really, really, really works to um, to motivate people. So, just to uh, just to conclude, yeah, make it relevant for people. Let them try to let, have them understand really how important NPS is, and try to keep it in layman's terms. Don't get too, you know. We love in market research, we love our acronyms, um, but keep it the language simple so that everyone understands what you're talking about. And then, um, like, as I said, it's very, very important to get uh, the right feedback. To the right people, um, just just not just NPS score. Listen, our NPS score is this. Okay, what do I do about it? Get them the right feedback with the actual issues that are relevant to their day-to-day -day job. That's so crucial. And then, then you gotta once you're doing that, then you're gonna have to have tools to track these issues. So you, you've got all these issues coming out. Oh, hopefully not too many, of course, but you've got these issues coming out of the the NPS survey, um, and you're you've identified them. Well, now you're gonna have to track them with some kind of ticketing system. Which, uh, which Ekmar, a lot of times will create these uh, like other surveys where that notifications are like there's like this cascading notification system from the main NPS survey down to the follow-up team. When the follow-up team has identified an issue, there's another notification going out to the to the team responsible for that for that category, and there's with a deadline and everything in it, and all of that all of that information, um, they have to then use that information to create action plans to correct those issues or to amplify the positive issues, don't forget. And um, then then you'll really see your NPS start to go up because if these the issues that are dragging it down, if those issues are being resolved, then you're all of a sudden going to see your NPS score start uh, start to go up. And then yeah, gamify, gamify approach. I know it's the buzzword, but it does work. Gamify your approach. Uh, to improve motivation, um, I've seen it gone. That gamification goes pretty far. Let's say even uh, where that to the point where that you may have uh, these different store locations or bank branch offices, and each branch will get its own NPS score. And then you'll look at the, the where they are, where what percentile they are within the organization, maybe compared to some kind of benchmark, the global NPS or just what percentile they're in compared to all the other branch offices or store locations. And then the the um, the bonus of the bank director or the store manager uh, is actually 
partially based on that percentile or the are in are they above or below the um the global the global mps uh the global mps score watch out for um yeah if you're you know uh, let's say in europe you've got a lot of different countries and there's a lot of different um yeah, people people think differently so let's say an eight in one country is not necessarily an eight in another country so watch out going cross-border with your um with those kinds of um uh yeah, scoring systems because let's say in, in certain countries people are more positive than in other countries um, but within a country that's definitely uh, definitely can work uh, although that does go that does go pretty far and, and and my preference is to sort of keep it positive and get the get the positive let's say if if uh, if a certain one of the branch offices has a very high MPS then try to get to put them put a spotlight on them in, in your newsletter say look this this is the comp this is the branch office with the highest MPS score and these are some of the comments literally taken out of the survey some of the comments that we've read about about this about the this you know great service or they really thought along with me and with my you know with the, in, in uh, my financial situation whatever those positive comments are and that'll that'll motivate other ones because oh I'd like to be in that uh, I'd like to, I'd like to be in the in the news in the in the newsletter there, and then th that that bank director is also going to feel really good about the fact that 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 all the other bank directors have to read about what a great job he's doing. So I think that that is also a serious motiv motivation. It's a motivation based on pride and less on on some monetary fund, but that's something that I think everyone has to decide uh, decide for themselves. And you know, of course, you know, we you know we can help. I mean, we have a vast experience in uh, in NPS research. We have we have analysts and experts who can help you set up your NPS program. So we've got this great survey tool where you can do a lot of this yourself. We've got these great templates to get you started right away. Um, and our you know our tools is we try to keep it as user friendly as possible. But you know a lot of times it's it's great to have like an expert. We've got a lot of experience doing this kind of thing. We can probably set up the help you set up the program quickly and you know avoid some of the pitfalls that we've seen other people other people make uh, fall into. Um, you know so we we also have a tool that can can continuously measure NPS. It's really important to kind of automate these kind of processes um, because it's you know an MPS program is not something that you just do once once a year then then that's that's too that you know that that cycle is too slow you need to be continuously measuring NPS continuously identifying the issues that are uh, you know that are good and bad and working on them all the time you don't just do it once a year a classic customer satisfaction survey and then identify issues after a long analysis of two months and then you form an action plan and then we'll measure next year how we're doing no it's got to be a continuous process and you need uh, a tool for that and, and which is what we have and then um, like I said we can also help you automate the follow processes that that information flow that I showed earlier that um, we can help automate that that process and we can also we've got we've got you know these uh, embedded dashboards you can use we can also build custom dashboards uh, like you know for the for that call centers we've done other places uh, with the real-time results where that you know the screen is refreshing on a regular basis that those are all things that we can build help you build or help you uh, implement yeah, so the now uh, see we've been about half an hour into it now I think it's uh, time now to uh, take some questions let's see um, what questions there are let me take a look at this you can imagine some music in the background right now playing as I look up what my questions what my questions are Let's see. Um, yeah, does everybody really have to be involved in the program? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I mentioned that 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 it does help if everybody. I mean, does everyone have to be specifically involved in the program? No, it's, it works really well to have good information flow where you've got, and it has to be always one person responsible. If you have like a team, and then it's like, oh no, I thought uh, the other guy was doing it or this is doing it. No, there's always one person responsible for each category. And it's their job within their team. They're like, you know, they're your, your enthusiasts. They're one of your uh, uh, most, and, and they're gonna they're gonna translate the results down to all the other people with, within the organization. Uh, it, it's important that everyone understands how important customer service is, especially in this day of social media. Everyone ha has a role to play. Do they have to be involved in the program specifically? No. I think it's important to have a good a good team uh, that can meet regularly and, and really work on work on it. Let's see if there are some other uh, questions. Music playing. One second. 
yeah, in the in the feedback program, yeah, how do you amplify what you're doing right? Um, yeah. Well, if you if you you know, yeah, do we try to be as specific as possible? Sometimes I, I've seen people play like word games, which is kind of fun. So if you just ask in your survey, um, you gave us a nine out of ten. What can uh, what what did we do to uh, deserve this score? But you can all, and then you'll say nothing. You, we love you guys. Right? You're not going to get a lot of valuable data. Sometimes uh, what's kind of fun to do with that and and uh, you know a, a survey like this is sort of a living instrument. It's not something that you set up and then you just do it once and you never change anything. You you can add things to uh, to a survey like like this and you can try different things out and you can hide questions and and show questions and and try different things out. So one of the things that w that we like to play with is with that question is not just you know the the, the boring you know you gave us a nine out of ten what what did we do great, is to uh, actually say wow you really love our company. Um, can you describe use what what seven adjectives would you use to describe our company? And it's just amazing the quality of the score because now that's also like gamifying it for the respondent, right? Uh, you're, you're 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 challenging them to to find these seven words to describe you, and uh, it's very interesting to see which words that they come up with. Uh, you can also do that with detractors, and you can try that question for a little while and see if it's if it's giving you good feedback. And if not, you can go back to the other question, or you can try different kinds of questions like that to see which one gets you the most verbose. Uh, answer the most the most uh, extensive answer from the uh, from from the respondents, or like I was saying, how you can how these surveys are not stuck in stone. Um, for instance, you know now you, we're hearing a lot about and we're working a lot around the uh, customer effort score, which is basically asking uh, you know uh, how. Um, which is asking, you know, how difficult was it to actually work with our company? You know, because people don't like friction, right? The more difficult it is to to uh, to work with your company, the less they're going li to like you. I remember uh, a few years ago, let's say uh, when you would go buy, let's say, a Dell computer, and you would you know you go to the website, I want to buy Dell, and then you all of a sudden you're faced with all these thousands of options, basically. I mean, which all these different models, and you click on a model, and you have to choose, you know, processors and memory and, and hard disks, and, and you just had tons of choices to make, and it just took forever to to order one. And then when you go over to to that's when at that same time when you would go over to let's say the Apple site and to order to order a laptop or something, basically they have like two models. And then within there, there's almost no choices. So it's, and then you've ordered a basic, everything is pre-configured and, and you just ordered very simply. So it, that was, there was a lot less friction there. And so by adding, let's say this like customer effort score to your, to your NPS survey at the end can help you, can, you can, you can all, we can, you can do in kind of interesting analysis. We've done that for customers where we'll see, is there a correlation, for instance, between the customer effort score and the NPS? Is that what's causing, uh, is that, is that what's dragging us down that there's too much effort to actually be our, or to be our customer? Um, and then if it's not working, if, if, the, if we're not getting good results from that, just turn it off. You can just, you can hide that question. So these, these longitudinal study, these longitudinal things you, like for instance, the, yeah, on the NPS question, you can't really touch it. Once you've decided how you're going to formulate the question just even changing one word could affect the score so you can't do there but in the follow-up um, you know are you going to do some extra questions based on keywords maybe certain issues are coming out and we're not sure what they mean you may want to ask people well can we contact you you may add that for, for certain issues let's say if there's you're, you're getting some issues you're getting in a certain category and you're not sure about what the people mean by it or there's some then you can add a question uh, saying okay if someone falls in that category you say oh, well you know uh, thank you for your response can we contact you if we have a question about your answers and some people will say yes and you can actually do some some your follow-up team can make a few phone calls you don't have to be doing that for everybody you you could you could turn it on for a little while for specific categories or specific keywords call those people talk to them actually find out more about the issues and then you can turn that into like a, one of those follow up questions where you're saying you know rank the you know rank our customer service on the following issues if, if if you don't know what they are in the beginning do some do some telephone calls find out what those issues are so that you can create that kind of a question and as soon as you're ready with that turn it back off again so it, these are living uh, living um, these are living things uh, these kind of surveys okay here comes some more music in a way while I'm checking for some more questions. Let's see. I'm going through some of the comments here.
Yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to type them down into the um, box here below. Um, after we round off, we'll still be looking at the, for the questions here, and um, I or uh, Sam or someone else within our team will uh, will definitely be uh, be continuing to answer the questions as they appear here below um, on the on the Google Plus page. Um, so keep asking those questions. If you have any uh, other questions, you can always you can reach us by by Twitter or Facebook, or you can send us a mail, and uh, we'll be happy to to get back to you. Um, if you'd like us to, if you'd like us to help you set up a, an MPS program or the uh, information flow, uh, we can also definitely do that with you. So um, uh, feel free to uh, come back at any time. Then, all right. Then uh, I'll be rounding off here now. Um, thanks for your time, uh, and I hope that you, we gave you some uh, real concrete tips that you'll be able to uh, implement. We'll also be putting uh, the slides up on on SlideShare, and we'll be posting the link here shortly uh, where they where they are so you can use them internally um, so that's it for me and um, hopefully we'll um, be doing some more webinars very soon uh, goodbye